I want to talk to you a bit about electron configurations. This screencast is meant to give you just a brief overview of what you're going to be dealing with in an upcoming Pogol on electron configurations. So we're going to be dealing with essentially how we describe where electrons are in a particular atom or an ion. And that's going to be helpful because if we know where electrons are, we can determine quite a bit about how that particular atom or ion might behave. The first thing to, to notice is that when you look at a model like what you see here on this first screen, this is a very typical model that you might see of an atom where you have electrons in a region around a nucleus. And this, this particular atom is an atom of helium. Um, helium with two protons shown in red, two neutrons shown in black. And this really doesn't represent reality as we know it today. The modern atomic theory tells us that electrons don't orbit an atom like a ring or in an orbit, but instead they're in general regions, regions that we call orbitals. Now those orbitals vary in their shape and in their energy. And the way the picture is oriented, I want you to understand that as you start at the bottom and work your way towards the top, the energy that an electron has to have to occupy that orbital increases. We're going to be introducing some new terminology here. We give each of those orbitals, which have a slightly different shape, different names so that we can understand that, hey, one is different than the other. This first one here, we call that the 1s orbital. And the second that you see is shown in blue, and that's called a 2s. Notice that in this photo, that center orange piece here, that's actually the 1s orbital. So you notice that the 2s encapsulates the 1s. And then from here, we have three orbitals that are what we call degenerate. They're really the same in energy. So this diagram is a bit misleading because these are the same in energy. And these are called the 2p orbitals. And if you get really fancy, you might call one the 2px, the 2py, and the 2pz. And those just basically designate what axis they're aligned with in space. So, key things to remember, electrons reside in orbitals that have varying shapes and energies. And key thing to remember from this diagram is that energy in general increases as you go up, uh, but also remember that the 2p are all equal in energy. So, these configurations that you're going to be working on, they tell us exactly where electrons are likely to be and which orbitals will have electrons. For example, you might see an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s1. That's the electron configuration for the element lithium. What that configuration tells us is that in the 1s orbital, there are two electrons. And in the 2s orbital, which remember is this orbital right here, there is one electron. So notice from that that these superscripts tell us the number of electrons in that particular orbital. Also notice that each orbital, at least from this model, the s seems to only be able to hold two before the next s orbital is filled. Well, let's take a look at some other ways to represent the same information. Here's a simple Bohr model of hydrogen. Hydrogen's a good place to start because it's very simple. It only has one proton and one electron. You notice on the right I've drawn an energy diagram using the notations that we just went over. 1s for the spherical 1s orbital, 2s for the spherical 2s orbital, and then three lines one for each of the 2p orbitals. There's three of them, remember. So, as a chemist, what I need to do is I need to represent electrons. Electrons will always go to the lowest energy orbital that's not filled. In this case, I haven't drawn anything here. So, let's talk about how we represent an electron. We're going to represent an electron in an energy diagram like this as a half arrow. So, you notice in this case, I have one electron right? I have one electron to draw, 
and I represent that one electron as a half arrow in the lowest energy orbital, which should make sense. The electron should be attracted to the nucleus, so it's going to occupy the closest available space in an orbital to the nucleus. And you'll see I've, I've designated the nucleus here in red. So we can show the electron configuration using an energy diagram like this, and we could also write it like I showed you in the past example here, which I underline in blue, in a more traditional electron configuration. And for hydrogen, that would look like this, and I'll write it in green. We would write it 1s, because that's the orbital that contains an electron, and then we designate how many are in that 1s, so it's 1s1. That would be the electron configuration for hydrogen. If we take another one, in, in this case you notice we've got six protons. The protons are shown in red, and we have six electrons, so that tells us that we're dealing with the element carbon. Um, the element doesn't really matter. All we have to worry about is showing electrons, and I'm going to do it in green as well. So we have six electrons to represent. The first electrons go in the orbital, the 1s orbital. Key thing to understand here is that each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. So, and an orbital is represented by a line in the energy diagram. So the first two go in the 1s. The next two are going to go in the 2s. Now I still have two left. So I've got three spots, and you might ask yourself, well, where do they go? They can really go in any of the three, but the key thing to remember is electrons are negatively charged. They're going to repel one another. So when you have energy levels that are the same in energy, space them out. They're going to repel one another. They're going to naturally go farther apart in that same energy uh, level that they can. So in this case, you see that 1s has two electrons, 2s has two electrons, and then the 2p orbitals have two total electrons. So let me show you how we write that. We would write it as 1s2, 2s2, and I combine all of the 2p's, so like all of these together, I just add them up. So in total, in this case, they hold two. But you can imagine there's space for more, so in future problems, you could have up to six, up to six electrons. So, why don't you take a break right now, pause the video, and try this problem. Take a look at the electrons and see if you can go back and figure out what the configuration should be. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to try it, and now let's talk about the solution. The solution, if you notice, we've got a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have 9 electrons. 9 electrons. So the first two electrons are going to go into the 1s orbital, so it should be 1s2. The next two electrons go into the 2s orbital, 2s2. And we've got 5 electrons left, so they have to go into the 2p orbitals. There's a total of 5 there. When in doubt, you can check your work, right, if you've done this properly, add up the superscripts, and they should equal 9, which equals the number of electrons that you see in the model there. Hope this was helpful. Have a great day.